Hey everyone, welcome, it's Caleb. In this video, we're going to be building an API with Django. And this video, unlike a lot of the other videos out there on YouTube, is not going to require any prior knowledge or prior code. So we're gonna start with a brand new project and talk about everything you need to do to get your API built. So it might take a little bit of extra time at the beginning getting things set up, but we'll be all on the same page and probably end up with a better product. Now this video was inspired by another video I did, which was the concepts of REST APIs followed up with some Python code, but we used a, a different framework known as Flask. So I thought it would make sense to kind of go through that same process but with Django. Now Django is a little bit more complicated, so if you need some extra resources on Django, you can check out my previous video, which was my Django crash course. But that's not a prerequisite for this video, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to jump in and create a brand new project. Just so everybody is on the same page, an API allows multiple applications to communicate with one another. So if you can describe all of the data for your application in a consistent format, typically JSON format, you can easily send and receive data between different applications. So a lot of big apps out there will have APIs that you can use. For example, Stack Overflow has an API, Instagram API, I'm sure Google has like a bajillion APIs, and you can work with their applications through code. So that is what the API is for. And typically, the API will allow you to do things like view data, create new data, update data, delete data. So we're going to look into how to do these things in this video. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make a directory and we're gonna call this drinks. This will be a little app to get information about your favorite beverages. So what we'll do is we'll change directory into the drinks directory. And from here, we're going to create a new Django application. So for this, you're gonna need Python. So Python 3, you can make sure you have it installed. If you don't, you can go to, on the internet and download it from the Python website. So that's the first step. Now before we go in and start installing Django and all these different things, I want to actually create a virtual environment. So the virtual environment is where we're going to install all the dependencies we need for our project to run, such as Django. And this virtual environment will be activated whenever we want to work on our project. So to create a virtual environment, we say Python 3 hyphen M and then use the venv command, and then give it a name such as .venv, which is what I always name my virtual environments. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a .venv directory. So you have to say ls-a to see it, and you can see it right there. So what I wanna do is I want to open up this directory we're in inside of Visual Studio Code. So you can go file open or open folder, select that directory, hit open, and now when you open a terminal, it's automatically going to be in that path. So from here, we have a virtual environment directory. You can see those files over here, but we actually need to activate it. So the way you do that is you say dot space and then the name of the directory, and you're going to go to a path, which is forward slash bin forward slash activate. So you can see that right in here, we got bin activate. That is the command to activate the virtual environment. And you're gonna see this in parentheses over here on the left. So you'll want to go through that activation process anytime you want to work on your project. And now when we install dependencies, they're going to be just for this virtual environment. So you don't have clashing dependencies across projects. All right, so what we need to do now is we need to start installing stuff. So we can say pip install Django. That's going to download Django and any dependencies. We're also going to say pip install Django rest framework. And that's the tool we're going to use to create the REST API. So now that we have Django installed, we should be able to say Django admin. And when you hit enter, you'll see a bunch of other commands you can execute after that, which is all useful stuff for your application. For example, you can run the server or you could start a project. And that's the one we're going to use. So we'll say Django admin start project, give it a name like drinks and then say we want this in the current directory, hit enter. And when we do this, we can open our files and see we now have this drinks directory inside of this outer directory here. So it's a little strange to see the same name here twice, but this outer directory can be named whatever you want. I just created that for organization's sake. So that way our virtual environment and this manage.py file are all in the same directory. All right, so far so good. We'll clear this off. So when we create a project, 
there's going to be a file created called manage.py. So what we can do is we can use this file and say python manage.py and think of this as a wrapper around the Django admin that does a little extra setup for us and makes things easier for us. So what we can do is we can say python manage.py run server and this will start the server on this URL so we can open that up and see that here. So this is the home page for your website. Now don't get too excited because we have a lot more to do. The first thing is this error here it says 18 unapplied migrations. So the migrations represent the data structure for the databases and those need to be created. So you can run python manage.py migrate to apply them and that's going to create those databases. So I'm going to leave this server running and open a new tab here. We'll start the virtual environment, activate, and now we'll say python manage.py migrate. So that'll apply all the migrations. You can see we get a bunch of OKs. So we have the essential database tables created. We're going to follow the same process for our custom data types. So whatever you want to make your API about, in this case, it's going to be an API to get information about drinks. We need to create a model that represents what a drink looks like. So this model is just going to be a Python class and we give it various attributes. As you continue to build your application, you're going to get more and more models and your database is going to become more complex. So Django has an admin page that'll allow you to see the different tables and see the data inside of the tables. This is pretty handy when you're building an API because you can make sure everything's working, checking it against the database tables. So what we wanna do now is go to this admin site. So in the browser, you can go to forward slash admin. Here is the admin page. However, there's not going to be a username and password already set. Mine just auto filled from saved username and passwords. So I'm gonna tell you how to generate this. Let's go back to the terminal, python manage.py create super user. This is going to ask for a username and password. We're just gonna go with admin and just give us some email address. And I'm just going to give it a really lame password, such as password. And it'll complain about the security with this, but you can override it just putting yes. All right, so we have that user. Now we can go in and log in, and you can see the tables. So what we want to do now is we want to get our own table on here. So to do that, we need to create a model. So let's go back to our code, check out our files. And inside of our drinks app, what we're going to do is we're going to say new file models.py. Now to tell Django that this is a model, not only do we put it in the models.py file, but we also need to inherit from a model class. So we need to get this class in this file. So we'll say from Django.db import models. Now when we create our class, which we'll just call it drink, we inherit from models.model. So that is how Django knows this is a model class. And now we can just give it some attributes such as name, and then we say the data type. The way we do this is by saying models dot, and there's various data types on here, such as char field, which is the one we want, and you can give it a max length if you wish. So I don't know what the world's longest drink name is, but I highly doubt there's much out there over 200 characters. We can also say we have a description, and we'll do something similar, models.char field, max length, 500. All right, so each drink should have a name and a description. So we're not creating a specific drink here, rather we're just describing what every drink should look like. Now to create a database table from this information, we just need to create another migration. So to do that, we can say python manage.py make migrations, and then the name of your app which is drinks. Now, before you do this, I'll show you actually what happens when you hit enter. You're going to get an error, no installed app with label drinks. So by default, there is this settings.py file, and in here it will list all of the different apps you are using. So our app for drinks actually isn't on here. So what we can do is we can add this to here by saying, drinks and that should fix the problem so let's try it again all right there we go migration for drinks and it created 0001 initial.py 
and you can see that in this migrations folder over here. Okay, so we created a migration. The migration describes the change to our data structure, but it doesn't actually apply that to the database. So to do that, we need to issue a command we issued previously, which was python manage.py migrate. So that will apply any unapplied migrations. So we'll hit enter and you can see applying okay. So there's one more thing we have to do to get our tables to show up in here, and that is we need to create a file inside of our drinks directory which is going to be admin.py and here is where we can register the different tables we want to show up in our admin panel now just to be clear you don't have to use this admin site so if you just don't feel like it's going to be that helpful you don't have to register your models in this admin.py file or even create that super user or anything like that. However, for my sake, I think it's going to be a little bit more helpful. So in here, we need to say from django.contrib import admin, and then import our model here. So dot models import drink. So the dot here refers to the same directory. So models right here. All right, so we got the imports. The only other thing we have to do is say admin.site dot register and then pass in the model drink that should be it so give that a save and I think this requires a refresh of the server so you can see nothing showed up yet so let's go back kill this server here with control C rerun it and that's going to register that model so let's go back refresh and there we go all right so we have our drinks table and you can test functionality here so we can add in a name grape soda and we'll just say very grapey. All right, save. Okay, so we have that drink object in here and you can go in and see the data. So now when we're testing our API, adding items, we can easily see that in this database. So let's go ahead and add another drink so that way we can get a list of all of our drinks. So we'll, this time we'll say orange soda, very orangey. Awesome, save. Now we have two drink objects here. And you can change the representation of the object instead of just seeing drink object one or drink object two. You can do that by going into the model file and inside of this class, creating an underscore underscore str underscore underscore method. And inside of here, you're gonna take self, which is how you create a method on the drink objects. And all this has to do is return a string. So for example, we could just return name plus a space plus the description. So now when we go back to the page, do a refresh, you can see a little bit more detail about the drink. All right, so we've done a lot of things. We created a model, we created a few instances and stored them in the database. But now what I wanna do is I wanna talk about how we can get that through the API. So we already installed Django REST framework, but we need to add that to our installed app list. So let's start by going to settings.py and in here we can just say REST framework. All right. And now what we're going to need is we're going to need a file. So inside of this drinks directory here, we're going to create serializers.py. And this is going to describe the process of going from a Python object to JSON. So here is an example of JSON. This is the structure we want to get back. Obviously, the attributes are going to be a little bit different. So we would have, you know, the drink name and then a drink description. But it's going to look something like this. So that is what the serializer class is for. So to do this, we're going to create a class and call this drink serializer. And this is going to inherit from serializers.model serializer <laughs> such a difficult word to say all right so where is this coming from we're going to import this from rest framework import serializers all right so we have it imported now all we have to do in here is pretty simple we're going to have an inner class and call it meta and this is going to be the metadata describing the model so the model is going to be a drink which we're going to need to import. So from dot models, import drink. And then the other thing we're going to need 
are the fields. So you can go in here and you're going to make a list of all the fields. So ID, this is going to automatically be added to that model. And we're also going to have the name and the description. So we're going to use this serializer when we're trying to return our model through our API. So the next thing we need to do, we have our model, we have our serializer, we actually need to create an endpoint. So to do that, we're going to create another file inside of drinks, and this is going to be called views.py. So this is where you create all of your endpoints, an endpoint being a certain URL that you can access data from. So as an example, we'll say def, and we're going to get a drink list. This is going to take a request, and in here, what we're gonna do is we're going to get all the drinks, serialize them, and then return JSON. So how do we get all the drinks? Well, the very first thing, as always, we're going to have to import it. We're going to have multiple imports here, so I'll just try to write them all out right now. The very first thing we're going to want is from django.http, import JSON response from our model, so from dot models, import drink, and then from dot serializers, import drink serializer. All right, so let's try to go through these steps. We're going to get all the drinks. So to do that, we can say drink, so access the drink class, and then dot objects dot all. So that's going to be all the drinks, and we can just assign that to a variable drinks, so the second step to serialize them, we're going to use our drink serializer class. So we're going to create an instance of that. So we'll say drink serializer, and this is going to take the drinks list as well as setting many equal to true. So that'll serialize all of them because we have a list here and we're going to get a reference to this object. So we'll just call a serializer and assign it this initializer call here. All right, so we have our serializer. Now all we have to do is return JSON, and to do that, we're going to return a JSON response, pass in our serializer.data, and I think that should be it. So we created our view. Now we need to say what URL is going to hit this view, and that's all done inside of urls.py. So open that file, scroll through here, and you'll see your URL patterns down here. So we can create a new path, and this will just be drinks, and it's going to hit our view, which we actually need to import. So we'll just import all of the views. So we'll say from drinks import views. So that'll grab that file right there. And then down here, we'll just say views dot, and then what we can do is pass in whatever function we want to hit, such as drink list. So to now see what happens, we need to visit this path. So on our website, what we'll do is we'll just go to, instead of the admin page, we'll go to drinks, hit enter. In order to allow non-dictionary objects to be serialized, set the safe parameter to false. So that's just a quick change inside of our view. In the return JSON response, we'll just put a comma and say safe is false. All right, give that a save. We'll go back and do a quick refresh. And there we go, we get a list of data. So if instead of having a list, you want it to be an object, all you could have to do is throw the serializer.data in a dictionary. So we'll just say drinks and set that equal to the data. That should do the trick. Let's do a refresh. And now we have an object with an attribute drinks, which contains the list. That's generally how I prefer to return data, but either one works. Congratulations, at this point you have a working API. It's pretty limited, all you can do is get a list of data, but you can start working on the other things you can do, such as adding a drink, editing a drink, deleting a drink. Let's get into some of those things now. So this whole process is called CRUD, Create, Read, Update, Delete. Right now we have the read ability. So we still need to do the C, R, and the D if we want that full CRUD capability through our API. So yeah, now that we're not returning anything other than an object, we do not need this safe equals false. So we can remove that, save, do a quick refresh, make sure it still works, and it's not broken, so we're good to go. 
Okay, so before we go in and create a bunch of other API endpoints for the different methods, so let me just explain a little bit for those of you who are fairly new. This is a function that will take a get request. So when we literally just put in this URL, we're getting this data. So that's why it's called get, like don't overthink it. So you can see this if you go into inspect and then go into the network. So this is going to record any network traffic through this page and we do a quick refresh and you can see we have this request here. So let's take a look at this. You can see that the request method is get or getting data and here's the URL and then here's the response. So that's what the request looks like. There's a bunch of other stuff in here too, but that's the main stuff. So there are other request methods that we need to deal with, including post, put, and delete. So when we have a function such as this here, we can actually make it take multiple request types. So not just get request, but also post request to add a new drink. So to do that, we're going to use a decorator and a decorator is something you put above your function to describe its functionality in some way and this is going to be API view and you're going to put the methods that you can accept such as get and we're also going to build the functionality for post as well now API view where does that come from from rest framework dot decorators and don't feel like you have to have all this memorized I've been referring to documentation as I build this just to make sure I get these imports correct. So from rest framework dot decorators, we have a problem cannot be resolved. So first thing it's import API view. And for this import here, well, there's a few things you might want to check to make sure this is fixed. First thing, make sure Django rest framework is installed, which we did. So, so far so good. Make sure it's spelled right. Um, and you might also check the settings.py and make sure you type that out here properly, which we did. So the only thing left I can think of is actually to do with the interpreter. So command shift P or control shift P on windows and type in select interpreter. So from here, what you can do is you can select your virtual environment. So it'll look at those dependencies as opposed to the dependencies installed globally on your machine. So once I select that, you can see that those problems went away. I think things would have worked still, but this is just the lens for Visual Studio Code to see what dependencies you have installed. And because all those dependencies are just installed in this virtual environment directory, we need to basically say, hey, here's where I want you looking, not at my global installed dependencies. So that's just a minor detail, don't really worry about it too much, but if you do run into that issue, that is the fix. So we made it such that we can accept get and post, and we can condition on that value inside of this. So if request.method is get, then here is what we want to do. And then what we can do is also check for post. So if request.method is post, what we can do is we can add a drink to the database. So this is basically going to be a very similar process, but in the opposite order. So we're basically going to take the data they sent us, deserialize it, and then create a drink object out of it. So the command's going to be pretty similar to what we have here, just slightly different. So we're going to create a drink serializer, and instead of passing in some value like the drinks we created up here, we're going to get that data from the request. So we will say data is equal to request.data. And we're going to get a reference to this object. So we'll say serializer, similar to how we did up here. All right, so next thing we need to do is we can actually check to see if the data they sent is valid. And the way you can do that is to call a method on this object. So if serializer dot is valid, what are we gonna do? We're going to save it. And the way you can do that is with serializer.save. Once that's done, we will return a response. And in here, we're going to say serializer.data, and we're also going to pass a status code. So we can say status and set it equal to status.http201 created. So the status needs imported, and it looks like this response might need imported too. So you can just do it this way, where if you get this little light bulb here, 
and you can see there's a few different options so you have to be careful when you do this automatic and we actually don't want any of these suggested ones so what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top and just do it manually we'll just say from rest framework dot response import response and from rest framework import status all right so those are going to be our two imports that we need so that we can return a response object and have a status value a lot of the stuff is given to us to make it easier for us from django so we don't have to worry a whole lot about the response all we do is pass in serializer.data and then the status and it looks like we might have an error with our API view here where it's supposed to only have one positional argument. And I think that's because we just have to pass these in as a list. So now we're just passing in one argument as a list. So our server's good to go. And now let's test adding an element to the database through the API. So you could use a tool such as Postman and we're just going to get the data. You can see this is the response. So now let's try to add some data and it's going to be pretty similar, but instead this time in the body, we're going to send data. So you can select raw here and under text, change this to JSON and you can paste in an object like this here. Just, I copied it from down there. We're just going to change some of the information here. So first, I don't think you need the ID. That should be done automatically. And for the name, Just say like strawberry soda. I don't know, I'm out of soda ideas. And for the description, we'll just say very good. All right, cool, let's send this in. We have a little error here where it didn't work. We have a runtime error. Checking back in the terminal, it's complaining about the slash in the URL. So let's check our urls.py and it has a slash here, but the URL we're using does not have a slash. So I'll just add that in there and try again. So we still have that same data. We'll hit send and you can see it comes back with an ID. So this part comes from inside of the view where we pass the data back in the response. So we give the data back, but now that data has the additional attribute of the ID. You should be able to see that this data made it to the database in two ways. The first is to actually just get the drinks again. So when we get the drinks, we get three elements back. Alternatively, you can take a look at the admin page. Since we set that up, we'll go to admin and we can see drinks and you can see there are three drinks in this table. Now you'll see from the admin panel, you can open up any of these drinks and get more information about it. Currently, there's not a whole lot of information here, but you can imagine there being a long list of attributes. This ability to get more details about an individual drink is a pretty important part of the API. So imagine you go to drinks and instead of getting the entire list, you just want to get the first drink here. So you pass in the ID of one and you get that drink information, but currently it's not working. So let's talk about how we can set this up. The very first thing we want to do is go into urls.py and create a new URL path. So we'll say path and the path for this one is still going to be drinks, but we're going to have a parameter here of type int. And you can just say like ID or PK or something like that for primary key. And this is going to hit views dot drink detail. All right, so this is the view we want to create. We just have to now go build out that view. So let me zoom out a little bit now that we're working with a little bit more code. Hopefully everybody can see everything fine. Let's go ahead and create a new function and this will be called drink detail. It's gonna be pretty similar where it has a request parameter and we're also going to have that same decorator API view. However, this one's going to have a few other options. So we're going to have the ability to get information about a drink, the ability to update, or we're going to use put for that and the ability to delete a drink. So this, we're gonna just follow a similar pattern where we just check the different options. So if request.method is get, we're gonna do something. For now, we'll just say pass. If request.method is post, pass. And we actually probably want this to be an elif, so only one of these will execute on any request. And then we'll just have an elif for delete. So if request.method is delete, we'll do something else here. 
Now forget, we're going to do it a little bit different than the way we did up here, as we have a new, better way of doing it. So, sort of how we did down here, we, we returned a response, whereas up here we did a JSON response. So it's a little bit different, and response comes from the Django REST framework, and it is the preferred way of doing things, because we're actually going to be able to set up some functionality to return JSON or HTML for better data browsing. So I'll show you how to do that here in this get request, and then we could actually go and edit this one up here as well. So as we've been doing, we're going to create a drink serializer, and this serializer is going to take the object to get. So what we're gonna do is actually put that up here. So we'll say drink.objects.get, and you can pass in the primary key. So PK is equal to the ID, which is going to be a second parameter passed in right here. So taking a look back at the URLs real quick, you can see we pass in this extra parameter. The value of this is going to be sent to views into this variable. So we can get a drink by its ID using the ID variable here and assigning it to the PK parameter. So the primary key equal to that ID we passed in. And we can check to see if this is valid. So we can say try and this can throw an exception. So we'll say accept and the exception is of type drink dot does not exist. So if something goes wrong, this exception will be hit and we can just return response status is equal to status.http and you can see all the different options here on the status. The one we're interested in is 404 not found. So now this is basically that checking just to make sure it's a valid request and we can use the, the drink object throughout. So we'll just assign it to a variable drink and now whenever we need to refer to that drink object, we don't have to go through this process again. So we can just pass in drink here and we're going to get a reference to the serializer. And now all we have to do is return response and pass in serializer.data. So these two lines are all it takes for the get request. And it's gonna be very similar to this one up here, but let's just uh, focus on this right now. Let's try it out. We'll just be able to get the data right now, but we should be able to go to the API and pass in some ID such as one. We hit enter and we get all the information for that drink. We pass in two, orange soda, three, strawberry soda, and then let's say four, nothing. If we do the same thing in the browser, we should be able to get one back. That works. And you can see this new HTML output here. It's kind of cool. If we put in four, it says 404 not found. So here's another example of where that response comes in handy. So this response is not JSON specific. So it's allowing us to see this HTML view where we can work with our data through the web page. It's very similar to the admin panel. So this kind of serves that same purpose, but now it's on the front end and doesn't require a login and you can't necessarily see everything in the databases. All right, let's go back to our code and let's go ahead and fill out the post and delete. Actually, this should be put, not post. So put is gonna be used for updating. I think that was just a typo from earlier, but the process is gonna be fairly similar to this post up here. So no big deal. So we can just say serializer is a new drink serializer, pass in the drink. And since we're going to be editing the drink, you can think of it as very similar to creating a new drink. We actually need to pass in the data that's being sent with the request. So we'll say data is equal to request.data. And then we can just check to see if it's valid. So if serializer dot is valid, what we're going to do is save the data. So serializer dot save, and then just return response serializer dot data. So give that data back. If it's not valid, we're just going to return response and we can say serializer dot errors and set a status. So status is equal to status dot HTTP 400 bad request. So that is the process for updating data. We can test that out. So let's go over to Postman. Let's go ahead and get the data for three. And now what we wanna do is make a put request and let's go ahead and change the data. So we'll go into the body, paste this here, but let's say soda edited. Now when we hit send, you can see it gives us back the new data. 
and when we get the data you can see it's persisted so we're still getting that change delete is super easy so let's go back go in here and all we need to do is take that drink object that we had a reference to earlier right here and say drink.delete. So just a typical way of doing it in Django if you have some Django experience, but we're going to return a response and pass in a status code. So status is status.http204 no content. That should allow us to delete stuff now. So if we go in here and say delete, pass in the ID of three, we don't have to have anything in the body. We can remove that from the request. Hit send. We don't get anything back. However, now when we try to get the data, it's not there anymore. And if we get all the drinks, you can see we only get one and two. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and take this new response behavior and put that in our old version up here. So it's going to be very similar to this get here. So let's copy these two lines, go up here, and we actually pretty much have that serializer already so we'll just say return response serializer dot data let's just try that out make sure it still works hit send you can see it's working but now we can go to the browser view all the drinks and we get to see it in this very cool html view so let's try something in here let's go into let's say drinks one and you can edit the data right here so we could say let's uh go with name Set that equal to test, and then we'll do description. Set that equal to sweet description. And then close the object, we'll hit put. It looks like it updated it, and we can go back to our drink list and see all of them, and that's changed. So we've went through pretty much three different ways of working with this data, the first being the admin panel, but that doesn't really use the API. For the API, you can use this HTML page, or you can use a tool like Postman. Now you might want to just get normal JSON data through the browser. So you could say something like .json, but you can see that doesn't work. I'm going to show you the fix for this right now. What we need to do is we need to build that capability in our URLs. So not only do we want these URLs, but we want these URLs with different extensions. So what we can do is we could use a function called format suffix patterns and pass in our URL patterns. And then we just reassign this returned value to URL patterns. So whatever this returns, we want to replace the URL patterns variable. Now we just need to import this and it's going to come from rest framework dot URL patterns, import format suffix patterns. All right, so that should give us that. The server's working. Let's go back to the browser, hit enter. All right, got an unexpected keyword argument format. The quick fix for this is we just need to add a parameter to our views. So let's go back to our view. And for this one, not only do we take request, but we'll take format and default it to none. We're gonna do the same thing for our other view here. So format is none. Now we should be able to go check in the browser, do a refresh, and there you go, you have it in JSON just like we would get from Postman, or you can just remove JSON if you want it in this HTML view. Now I do wanna do some front end on consuming the APIs we create. However, I don't wanna quite do a full stack application in this video. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to do a very simple request through Python to show how you might consume an API. And then I'll leave it open for future research or a future video if you want to subscribe and stay tuned for upcoming episodes. So in our project, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear out all these files and we're just going to create a new file and I'm just going to put it in our main directory, consume.py. So we're not going to need to work with the Django stuff anymore, but we need to keep our server running if we want to consume this data. So let's just keep that running. And in a new tab, what we can do is we can run this Python file. So you can do that by just saying Python consume.py. That'll do it. Or you can hit this play button right here. And that'll show up either in the terminal and the output depending on your settings. So let's go ahead and say print testing run the application, you can see the output there. So I'm gonna do it through the terminal just so we have this virtual environment here. And I'm going to say pip install requests. 
And this is a module that allows us to make really simple requests to pages on the internet. So what we could do is we could say import requests and then say response is requests.get and pass in a URL. We'll just say 127.0.0.1 colon 8000 slash drinks, which I believe is the URL that's running our server right here. And then we'll just print the response dot JSON. So let's try it out. And if you get this error here, no connection adapters, we just have to put HTTP. So it needs to know the protocol. We'll run it now. And you can see we get that data in our Python application. So that's the bare basics of consuming an API. Literally three lines of code. Very, very simple. So in this video, we've done a ton it's a lot to learn. <laughs> and throughout this video, I had to reference the documentation a lot too, especially for all the different imports. So don't feel like you have to be perfect from day one, maybe by day two or three, but until then you're okay to make a few mistakes. If you want more content like this, I'm working on a Python backend course. I'll leave a link to early access to the notes, are free and you'll also get notified through email when the course is released. We also have a ton of other Python and web development videos on this channel.